met him while he was with the group Blackstreet. But what we don't know, which we'll find out this afternoon, is his journey prior to Blackstreet as well. Please make a nice, thunderous round of applause for my brother, Dave Hollister. with y'all what's going on with you oh man first of all it's good to see you again good man. to see you brother it's been a long time it's, it's been a long time but you know last time I, saw, I don't know if you were i don't know if you were preaching but you probably were way way back when yeah you were preaching before black street right yes sir yes sir and that's what i want to know man i mean well first of all let me start by asking um how blessed and highly favored is dave Hollister? Man, I'm so blessed. It's uh, going from, man, where I started from and then fell into and then came back to again. Um, and I, I do certain things that I, I hear people saying. Um, I'm blessed and I'm favored, but I'm not highly favored. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, this is school for thought for y'all. I'm a Bible study. I just got my doctorate in theology. I uh, just graduated with my doctorate in theology. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. And, man, Lenny, studying the Bible, man, has become, for me, man, like, it's my saving grace. It's my safe haven. You know, it's, it's, it keeps me out of a lot of trouble. Um, you know, and, and uh, going on now, I'm going on to get my Ph.D. in biblical studies. So it's, it's, it's something that I love to do. So when I, I, I used to say that all the time, I'm highly favored, I'm blessed and highly favored, highly favored. But the Bible says there was only one person highly favored, and that was Mary. Mary is the only person that was highly favored because she was the one that carried Jesus Christ. So therefore, I'm blessed, and I'm favored to the max, <laughs> but I can't take Mary's <laughs> highly favored. You know? But you so. do have a ministry. Yes, sir. And your yes, ministry sir. started way before we could ever possibly imagine it. I want to touch base, obviously, on your life's journey from Black Street on and how that happened for you, but also want to uh, find out the journey of Dave Hollister that led him to, because you were a soul singer, you were doing gospel, you know, very, very early on, but it was, it's in, it was in your DNA. Yes, sir. But you had a ministry, and obviously it, it's become more clear for you over the years. Yes, sir. And now you are where you are, but let's, let's just go down that, that journey of, prior to Black Street? Oh, man, where you want to start? Uh, well, it, uh, music actually started for me seriously uh, when, I went to, when I went to college. I got hurt playing ball and couldn't play no more. And we, we talking about 1989 when the rehab wasn't what it was now. Mm. Um, went, through, uh, went to Morehouse. Uh, first of all, I went to Morehouse and I, um, yeah, Morehouse, 86 to... 86 to 89, um, and uh, when I got hurt, man, it was like a deep depression um, uh, alongside of, uh, man, alongside of some other things that happened in school, um, you know, I, I fell into a deep depression, went back home, uh, and then I went to uh, another school, college in Chicago called the American Conservatory of Music, and that's when the bug really hit me. I knew it was in you know, my DNA, I sung when we was little and all of that, but that wasn't, I thought I was going to be in the league. Well, hold on, at Morehouse, you wasn't studying music? No. But what was your major at? No, theater. Theater and uh, science, uh, accounting. So, uh, man, but I, I, even in that, I didn't even want to do that. I wanted to be in the league, man. <laughs> right. I'm five, <laughs> five foot eight. 140 pounds, and I think I'm going to be in the league. Linebacker, right? All of this came from depression. After <laughs> <laughs> All of this came from depression. I was, I was playing basketball. So um, this, 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 all this love came from depression. I really fell into it. But then, so, man, I, I, got the, I got the bug. I started singing in clubs um, at the age of 19. And in Chicago, I don't know how many of y'all know, in Chicago, you can't get in a club until you're 21. But my voice was so grown, they were saying that all the cats that played around, I was actually in a uh, band called Chicago Cats. 
and I was 19, and the oldest, the youngest uh, next to me was like 34. Mm. So, you know, they used to sneak me in the clubs. They will put a mustache because I wouldn't. I ain't had no peach fuzz or nothing going on. So they would, you know, put mustaches on my face, and I get in the club like that. And once I open my mouth, they were like, "Yo, dude, man, y'all killing the night." And we would do cover tunes, and you know, we had no original songs. So I was like, you know what? I I like this. I like this. Man started uh then Glenn Jones came through uh town one time um and I was uh I had just turned 20. It was a year later. Glenn Jones came to town and was like, "Listen, man. I was already singing background with Vanessa Bell Armstrong at that time." And uh Glenn Jones came through and asked the keyboard player with uh Vanessa Bell, "Yo, you know somebody in Chicago I could use a guy? I need a guy." He said, "Yeah, I know his cat." Um, so when I showed up, man, I, wa <laughs> I walked in the place and he was like, uh-uh, he too little. <laughs> I ended up singing, man, got the gig with him, and the rest was history. We went all over the world together. Wow, wh what a wonderful story, brother. Um, how did you meet Teddy? Ah, I uh, was singing background. Because, see, I made my living at that time as a background singer. And... Um, Man, when I tell you I wasn't even looking to be in the spotlight, I didn't care because I was making real money as a background singer, man. Really? Uh, man, I, uh, yeah, man. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn play, paid well. Huh? Not Glenn. Who? Uh, I went on from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just threw Glenn underneath the bus on that one. Oh. Wasn't Glenn that came. I mean, you know, we became, we became real, real close. And, uh. You know, I ended up getting other gigs from him. I end on, uh, ended up going with Patti LaBelle for five and a half years. Uh, I was touring with Patti and Mary J. Blige <laughs> at the same time. Um, and then I kind of left them, uh, not left them, but started gigging with George Michael, God rest his soul, um, Phil Collins. Those are the people that was paying me. Mm. Yeah, the, the, those <laughs> was. <laughs> That was the real money. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, but so I went on tour. The way I met Teddy is I was on tour with uh, Mary J. Blige. We were on the Bobby Brown Humping Around Tour. Oh, that's for sure. In 91. And we went through uh, Hampton, Virginia. Teddy was in Hampton, Virginia. VA in the house. We got, <laughs> went through Hampton, Virginia at the Coliseum. And uh, Teddy was there. And Mary did a song with KC called If Loving You Is Wrong. All I have to do, I don't do anything else. And when KC was late, either late to the show or didn't show up, I would do the song. So it just happened this night, KC was very late. And uh, my cousin, boy, I love him. <laughs> no, he wasn't drunk then. He wasn't drunk then. <laughs> uh, he just, they, Jodeci was coming from another show. So uh, he wasn't drunk that time. But uh, that's my cousin, so I can talk about it. But um, he, he, Teddy saw the show. He came backstage. He was like, yo, P, what are you doing, man? I said, I'm working on a little solo project, you know, with Puff. And, you know, he was like, nah, man, I got this opening in my group, man, new group called Black Street. Do you want to? Yes, I do. I couldn't even <laughs> want to let him. I ain't even want to let him finish saying it. I was, yeah, man. I'm. So he took numbers. He said, let's change numbers. Let's change numbers. Took my number, man. And, um. I was on, on the road. He hadn't called. So I was getting ready to go on the road with, a road with Bruce Hornsby. We were going on tour. Wow. And, uh, man, this was like a three-month tour. We were getting ready to go on. The night we were pulling out on the bus, and Bruce Hornsby at that time was living, it was still living in Williamsburg, Virginia. Mm. And um, that's where we would rehearse at his house. <clears throat> we were boarding the bus at his house. Teddy called. He said, man, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. You ready? I said, no. <laughs> uh, so I turned around and told Bruce, and Bruce said, "Man, listen, go do what you go do what you got to do. This is your time." That was and that night, he took my uh, stuff off the bus, got me a car himself, got me a limousine, and had me ride up to Rich uh, to Virginia Beach, and that was that. Brother, you you have had blessings. Man, definitely, God has been good to me, man. Tremendously, God's been good. Am I the only one who had that first Black Street album? <laughs> can I say, I could put that album on and cut for cut from the first track to the last track, it's just like, oh man, you don't even want to turn it off. Man, can I tell y'all something about that? We did 40 
songs for that record. 40 songs. Every time we would get ready, Jimmy Iovine was like, Ted, where's the record? Where's the record, Ted? Where's the record? I ain't ready, Jimmy. I ain't ready. I ain't ready. He was so scared of the guy's success, he was scared to be a failure. And he didn't think that Blackstreet was going to live up to the guy hype. Oh, it definitely did. Because he had Aaron and Damien calling him stupid. You know, man, you stupid for that, man. You dumb. Man, that's stupid. You, you, they'll never be us. They'll never be us. Soon as we came out, shot up. Smack. Surpassed any guy record they ever did. But see, at that time, though, correct me if I'm wrong, Guy was kind of like at a standstill. Yes. So yes. He, he wanted to have another venture. Yes, he did. And it was impactful. I mean, was Man. it impactful for you guys? Did you like Black Street? It was great. Thank you. It was, it was crazy because, you know, he actually did Rex in Effect before he did yeah. us. And um, he wanted to do R&B. He wasn't a rapper. So he wanted, he was like, since Aaron and Damien don't want to do this, then, you know, I want to put together another group. But he was so intimidated, you know, by the guy's success, you know, that he was, he felt like, man, this ain't, this ain't going to be the same thing. And Jimmy Iovine did not hear the hit record that he wanted to hear in the enormous amount of songs that you covered? We never turned it in. You we, d we didn't turn nothing in. They heard nothing until we finished the record. Oh. They heard, they didn't hear anything. Um, Teddy would not release. He did the Prince. He God rest Prince. So he did the Prince. Man, you're not gonna hear nothing until I'm ready to turn it in. But it got to the point <laughs> where Jimmy was like, "All right, we gonna drop y'all if you don't turn this record in." Teddy was like, "Okay, here you go." <laughs> <laughs> and then we had like 21 something songs on that record. And how many of the songs did you actually write? Mostly all of them with him. Wow. Mostly all of them. Yeah. That means a great check. Still, 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 thank you, Lord. <laughs> and I'm so glad for this thing called um, Sound Exchange now. Really, what? Oh, uh, Sound Exchange now. It's uh, it's uh, it tracks you as an artist on all um, all internet, uh, XM radio, really? Sirius, Sirius radio, all of those chains, man. Anything, Websites, personal, websites? all of them, really? all of them, around the world, around the world, and not just. You as a writer, it's you as an artist. So if your name is attached to anything, if your if you sing a line, background, a lead on anything, that's a check. Wow, that's a check. And 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 just explain that because that's that gets into licensing. Yes, sir. BMI, ASCAP, ASCAP CSAC. CSAC. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the importance of that for those who might be a singer among us, the importance of that is to make sure that you get. Sound Exchange, register with Sound Exchange. Anybody in here who's an artist, who even does background, anything with your name on it, register with Sound Exchange. I guarantee you, you ain't going to regret it. I wish I had that there for radio people, because. <laughs> <laughs> right. I <laughs> dig it. That, that's, that's a, man, that's all. Awesome. Lenny, all you got to do is come talk on one of these new tracks of mine. You'll be all right. Well, I've been waiting for that, David, for a long <laughs> time, man. But I think I'm ready. I think I'm yes, ready. Sir. I think yes, I'm ready. Yes, sir. Um, there it is, no question. Uh, most, of, come on, man. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> so wait, let's talk about uh, back back to Black Street for just a moment. Mm -hmm. You only did one album with them, right? One album, and then um, most of the stuff that was on the second album we had already cut. It was for the first album. We just didn't use it. Um, no mm -hmm. diggity actually was the remix to a song called "I Like the Way You Work" that was on our first album, and actually. LL Cool J came up with that. I like the way you, because he was on the remix. And he just kept hollering through the remix, no diggity, no diggity. So we took it and made it, a, um, you know, Teddy back then, he would take a song and make a whole nother song out of it and make it a remix. He would call it uh, the bedroom mix or, you know, the dance floor mix or, you know, something like that. So no diggity, we had already done. Um, and then <laughs> when they came out with it and, uh, replace my voice on the lead, I still heard my voice on the background. Oh and wow. I called Teddy, I was like, dude, what you doing? He was like, oh, D, man, you know, we was in a hurry. We was in a, but, but I take care of you. You doggone right you gonna take care of me. <laughs> so um, don't leave no diggity and fix 
I'm still I was still on those songs. Well, can we scratch the surface on what made you not stay with Black Street? I um, mean, I know I know you and Teddy are cool. And oh yeah. Are. <laughs> you said Chauncey. Okay. Black Tail Chauncey. No, um, Chauncey was one of the factors, but it wasn't the main factor. I, uh, if I didn't want to leave, I could have stayed. Um, but Ch Teddy had to go back and do another guy record. He had to because it was contractual. And uh, at that time, MCA was knocking his door down like, you owe us another record. And they only did it because the Black Street record, the first one blew. And, um, you know, they forced him into doing it. Uh, and when he, they went to Trinidad to do the record, and uh, while he was in Trinidad, you know, I was getting offers to do duets and produce other people and write on other songs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I called Ted um, while they were working on the record, and I said, Teddy, man, listen, you know, I, gotta, I got uh, opportunities to do duets with other people and work with other people. I just need your blessing. I need you to be able to sign off on me doing that because we were actually signed to him. Right. Um, so he said, man, nah, man. He said, nah, D, I can't do that, man, because it's going to look like the group, man, is split up, you know. Because like you would have sound at, at that time. You would have sound coming out the gate. Yeah, man. And, and when the signature sound leaves, if you go someplace else, everybody's like, we're worrying about mint condition, but we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> But um, my when the heart, signature sound, my heart, make this my heart, when, man. when the signature sound leaves, we often, and I can see his concern. Yeah, and and I was telling him, you know, I'm not going nowhere. I just want to, you know, what I'm saying, I got a family too. You know, I, I got a wife and two whole boys to feed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they, them boys wasn't no joke. <laughs> right. So, uh, you, you know, he was like, Nah, D, if they can't do the whole group, I can't let you do it. I said, Okay. Well, then you're going to have to let me go. You right. not you can't hold me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a grown man. You know. Well, he wouldn't allow you to produce or write as well? Mm -mm. You, oh. If it wasn't under him, if he, if, if he didn't have nothing to do with it, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let me do it. But he mutually, after, you know, after me and him did some, you know, uh, intense talking. <laughs> he, uh, Behind closed doors. <laughs> Of course. Right. Right. After we did some, you know, intense talking, uh, we ended up, he ended up saying, okay, cool. You know, I'll, le I'll let you go, you know. And then, you know, because me and Teddy has, have always had a mutual respect for each other. So, um, you know, he was my hero. You know, I, I, when Guy came out, I was, I was a Teddy Riley Guy fan. Right. So, you know, I had the utmost respect for him and never lost respect for him. Nev in, the, in, in all of that time and all of the intense conversation and all the arguing, you know, we never, never had uh, lost respect for each other. So he thought about it and he let me go with his blessing. And then he said, you know, if there's anything you want me to do, I'll do it. So never, never went back, obviously. Uh, I don't know where the Black Street situation is now, aside from doing shows, but. Right. Any talk about possibly doing another Black Street album with you and maybe Chauncey as well? Chauncey never. I'm just okay. gonna be honest right. with you. So I, be it for that. I can't. I can't do it. But um, <laughs> Teddy, uh, Teddy and I, uh, actually, we had when I came back to Black Street in 2009, it was uh, myself, Teddy, Chauncey, Mark, and Eric. Um, then you know some things happened. Some things happened. It fell out, you know, and uh, now Chauncey is doing his Black Street, Teddy and I doing our Black Street, like the Temptations. But uh, wow. it's a difference. Oh, I know. Uh, no. it, it's you know, a you big difference. Brother. Okay. And, and Chauncey's yeah. a good singer. Let, let's, let's definitely put that <coughs> on the table. <laughs> but, 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 but it is a difference, a drastic difference. Let, let me just say this real quick um, before we kind of continue. If there's anybody that has a question for Dave, please come up to the mic. We can start uh, lining up right now. And please don't be shy. This is a wonderful opportunity please for don't. you to kind of really just kind of speak your mind. I um, want to get into a lot of things, but I, wanna, I think I should go to the microphone first. So yes. let's go to the mic. <laughs> so please say your name and where you're from. My name is Ray from Compton, California. Compton, my man. Oh, Big fan. Thank Big you, sir. Thank, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are a family member. Thank you, sir. I'm a diehard Tupac fan. 
a lot sir. of people didn't know this song. The song um, um, Boom Boom Got a Baby on the Hill. How did the song work? Elaborate mm. on that. Oh, that now that's a good one. Um, it's actually Brenda's Got a Baby and Keep Your Head Up. Yeah, yeah. Um, we uh, actually, I was over in Japan with uh, Glenn Jones. We were doing a place called the Emza Coliseum. I mean, the Emza Club and Digital Underground was over doing the Emza Coliseum. And we had two shows. They had one. So they came to sound check, uh, our sound check, and they just kind of hung around uh, mm -hmm. after the show. Uh, um, and di uh, On the first show, it was like an 8 o'clock show or something like that. And uh, Tupac was the only one that really kind of came over to me. The rest of the guys kind of left. And he came up to me, hey, man. What's man, man? What's man? What you, what you out here doing with this old man? What you doing, <laughs> man? You need to be down with us, man. Come on, I'm gonna take you over to Shot G. So in between our show, their show was going on. We had a later show, and um, he had me sing for Shock in the in the dressing room, and Shock was like, "Yo, B, why don't you come on stage with us?" I ended up going on stage with them, and and the rest was history. I ended up leaving Japan once I got back to Jersey, to Edgewater, that's where we were living. Edgewater went back to Jersey, told, talked to Glenn, and told him, you know, man, Digital Underground wants me to come and go on the road. Ended up flying to Oakland and living in Oakland. Me and Tupac ended up sharing an apartment. So uh, wow, that's we became very, very close, very, very close. So after he left, um, after he left the Digital Underground situation, we ended up recording the songs in the first, when I saw the movie, I was kind of upset yep. because the way they portrayed mm -hmm. the songs and the way they portrayed uh, just the, the movie in general was wrong. Yeah. Uh, me and Tupac recorded Brenda's Got a Baby in our living room. Mm -hmm. We didn't record it wow. in no studio. He went and took it, the four track, and mixed it there. Mm -hmm. I mean, took it to Dion and Dion mixed it, but we recorded it in our living room in our apartment on the four track, false text. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he's he's forever be my friend, yeah. man. You know, whether he's here or not. That's right. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Your name and where you from? Hi, my name is Tracy, and I'm from the Miami Fort Lauderdale area. Hi, Tracy. Hi, I love you on Hezekiah Walker's oh, Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I absolutely love that. Can you speak to how that came about? And if you have plans to collaborate with any other gospel artists, and should we be expecting any gospel albums in the future? Mm, good question. Good question. Um, the Hezekiah Walker situation came about. I was um, living in New York at the time. And where you go? Where my family member go? Phyllis, um, Phyllis and Bernard Alexander Sr., uh, their son, Bernard Alexander Jr., was my manager at the time. And um, <coughs> we were going to Hez Hezekiah's church. And uh, I was actually leaving to go on the road. And he was like, hey, I got the song I want you to get on. Um, me and BBJ got the song. So it ended up going to uh, Let's Dance first. We did Let's Dance first. And then Grateful came a couple of years later. He just called me out the blue and said, I need to fly you in here for you to do this song with me. And it actually was not Grateful. The song wasn't grateful. That's not the song we were supposed to do. We were supposed to do another duet, me and uh, Pastor Kirby, on that album. And Kirby ended up not getting there in time. So he ended up calling me off the side just to sing, you know, on the end of this song. And it was just, Lord just blessed and it did what it did. Um, from, I have done uh, two gospel albums, one in 06 and one in 08. And then uh, I was in the group United Tenors with Fred Hammond, me, Eric Roberson, um, Fred, and uh, Brian uh, Courtney Wilson, which was in 2012. We released that in 2012. And I'm, it's a natural progression for me to go back, um, especially now. But, That's you know, I'm working on some other things first. That you grateful, man. Thank you. That grateful. Every time, I, I just tear up. It's, it's so man. touching. Man, it was... And it was it was so like out of the blue, you know. Really? He just started calling people, you know. And uh, after he called Kirby and he called me, I was like, mm. I don't know what to do on this song. <laughs> you just let the spirit move. And man, and I just said, all walking up to that stage, I said, God, you're gonna have to take the wheel. And you he did have to take the wheel, and he did. He, he did. did. Your name? Where you from? 
My name is Sherry. I'm from the Low Country area of South Carolina, Buford Shrimp and Grit Land. Yes, ma'am. How you All doing, right. Sherry? <laughs> so my husband and I were uh, very big fans of yours, and we mm -hmm. followed you throughout the years. Realizing that you have spent a lot of time in years as backup singer for many artists and just, you know, singing yourself, mm -hmm. um, is there an artist, if you had an opportunity to perform with, who would that person be? Good question. Andy Irie. Right. We can make that deal in this show. Yeah. I know, right? Let's do and that. You, and you know, the crazy thing is we are very good friends. We just haven't done any records together. Okay. Well, you know what? Maybe we need to present a challenge to you. Do that. And do that on the ship, maybe. Ah, <laughs> right. wow. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That would be a special unplugged, spontaneous oh, kind of. Uh -huh. Wow. That, and oh, wow. Like I said, that's my girl. That's my girl. We just, and then, you know, she's often called me on stage. We just have not recorded a record together. And uh, I did have another dream, um, which just came true uh, yesterday. I always wanted to do something with Robert Glasper. And uh, he walked He's in, in he walked in my dressing room. I'm scared of, show. well, when you dream, <laughs> we're going to talk about your dream okay. stuff. Okay. Okay. Wow. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, your name, where you're from? Hi, my name is Wendy Hicks. I'm from Washington, D.C. Hey, Wendy. I have, hey. D.C., one of I my have, favorite places. I have an internet TV radio show called Indie Voice, mm -hmm. and I'm putting together a collage of responses. I'm asking artists the same two-part two question, and I'd like to play it for my audience when I get back home, something to help independent artists. I talked to you yesterday. Yes, huh? yes. Okay. Okay, okay, so let me just make sure I got this straight. You going to do it now? <laughs> yes, I, you know, I maximize. Would, I would I would think you want a different setting than this. Well, I kind of wanted to, but I learned that you don't let opportunities <laughs> pass you by. <laughs> now, if we can do I it like again, that. that's fine, but I'm making sure that I get this. Uh, okay, all right. So my, the first part of the question is, what is the most valuable advice that you were given, that you've been given, that you've actually followed? Now, that's a real good question. Um, I guess it would be, uh, to be honest with you, and it's not a, you know, it's... It's, it sound may sound cliches, but always, always put God first, mm -hmm. always, and that came from my mama. Mm -hmm. um, and and musically, the crazy thing is, I'm such a hard head mm -hmm. that I never really followed musical advice okay. because it, you know when I did, it didn't help me. Right. Um, you know, oh man, just ask for what you want. Did, nah, that don't work all the time. Mm -hmm. You know. You, you, if you if you want to do if you want to be something in life, uh, go after it. Especially in this music game, man. Just go make your own way. Right. That actually worked mm -hmm. because I did have to make my own way. Nobody helped me. That's why for me, I'm so try. I try to help everybody mm -hmm. because nobody helped me. And you know, I'm I got a sister that's 11 months younger than me, um, and. For years, she was upset with me because, unbeknownst to me, my little brother had to tell me. She was upset with me for years. I mean, just doing dirty stuff, you know what I'm saying? Telling my old girlfriends where I was and what I was doing <laughs> with oh other man, girls. That's horrible <laughs> things, man. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and for years, I, didn't, I couldn't understand what did I do to you. And she told my baby brother, she said, he never helped me. Well, I didn't know you wanted to be an artist. I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I would have told you the same thing that happened for me. You got to make your way. Absolutely. You, nobody's going to give you anything. Right. I mean, I can help you uh, as much as I can, but nobody's going to give you anything. You got to go and get it for yourself. Absolutely. So that's, that's a good segue into the second question. So three words of advice that you can offer to um, artists. Three words of advice? Yes. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> pray, pray, Thank pray. You, that's not only for artists, that's for everybody. Man. Everybody. Man. Everybody, especially in the way the world is right now. Brother, the power of prayer is something else. It is. Something else. Don't get me started, y'all. <laughs> Tell me you don't get me started. Go ahead, sweetie. Hello, my name is Marcia Morris, and I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hi, Marcia. Hi. First, I would like to say that I think you are an incredible,
incredibly talented person. Thank you so much. I, I really do. I love your music. Thank you. So you were saying that um, you are now pursuing a doctorate in theology? Uh, I've got a doctorate you in theology. You have a doctorate. Yes, ma'am. Okay. PhD so in biblical PhD. studies. PhD. Yes, ma'am. So when you transitioned into becoming a preacher, what did you experience a lot of backlash? Oh, um, yeah. How was that transition for you crossing over from the secular um, set to the Good question. Yeah. Good question. Marcia, you said? Yes. Good question. Um, it's a pretty lengthy one, too. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I never really transitioned because I never left. Okay. Um, I've always been, uh, I got saved at the age of seven. Um, if Did I know what I was doing? No, I didn't. At seven, you really too much don't um, because everything at that age is given to you. You know, um, the advice, the, the, the preacher and pastor that you sit up under, it's all given to you. It's forced on you. So um, by my mother and my father being pastors of different churches, uh, I had nothing to do but church. So I knew the church lingo. I knew what to do. I knew what to say only because it was recorded in my head, if y'all can follow what I'm saying. So I, I, I grew up I grew up in church, but in the street as well, um, hiding everything from my parents. You know, even me and my brother talk about a lot of stuff that we did now. My sisters tell my mother now. And she was like, oh, my God, if I would have known that, I would have locked you in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we would have found a way out. And that's just who we were. But... Um, I did definitely received uh, a lot of backlash when I did my first gospel album because it really wasn't a gospel album. It was not you know, a quote traditional. Unquote, traditional, traditional gospel album. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a bunch of letters to God because I was just giving myself back to, back to, to God. I was rededicating myself back. And um, I had a lot of questions. You know what I mean? I had a I had a lot, a lot of questions that um, normally I would get beat down for in the Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, you know, the, the religious churches. Mm -hmm. Listen to me good, because it's never about religion. It's about relationship. Yeah. Watch this, and y'all listen to me good. Religion controls. Relationship connects. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Everything about church, most typical churches now, is religion. And if you think about it, it's controlling you. Yeah. There are rules, and rules control. Lord enough, Jesus never tried to control anybody. He always tried to have a relationship. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Amen. He did not say, "I'm go I, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. So I was... Um, Man, I was really bawling one night just thinking about, okay, I'm going to go into full-time ministry, God, I'm going to stop running. Um, and I was like, Lord, but, you know, I love music. He was like, well, that's what I gave you. That's, that's who, you're a messenger. That's who you are. You're a messenger. It ain't about what you, who you sing to, it's about what you say. It ain't, you, I'm never going to put you in a box. So I never allow people to put me in the box. If it's inspirational music I want to do, that's in my heart, that's what I'm going to do. If it's an R&B record, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I don't sing the raunchy stuff no more. I, don't, I never was really raunchy, but I did do a lot of cussing. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I just said what I felt at the time. <laughs> and, um, but you, you, you never, even now in the shows, I, you know, I'm conscious sometimes you know, but a lot of times when I'm up here, y'all, I go back to the place I was when I when I wrote the songs. So it comes out, and I'm like, okay, God, you got to forgive me for this one. <laughs> no, I made you your authentic self, you know. So the transition was kind of hard, but the Lord told me um, in, um, in Matthew 9 and 10, look it up. Uh, I said, well, God, how can I, how can I do this? You know, how he said, I told Matthew, Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors back in that day, they were hated. They were the filthiest people in the world. But when he called Matthew, he said, follow me. He didn't say stop what you're doing and follow me. He just said, follow me. 
Some of the people he told to stop what you're doing. Some of the apostles he told to stop what you're doing. So, so the, the premise of what I'm saying is God can use you in the darkest of places. It don't have to be. Some of us, he allows to go into these places and you get a glimpse of him. I don't care if you got a drink in your hand. You could be ministered to with a drink in your hand. Bible don't say nowhere in the Bible. It don't say you can't drink. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Find it and tell me. Find it, find it, find it and show me. Find, find, find it and show me. It's what happens when you do too much of it is what becomes the problem. So that was, for me, the transition has become easier because God doesn't put me in front of people that I'm not supposed to be in front of. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Hi. Hi. I'm uh, Kisha. I'm from New York. How are you? Good to meet you, good. Kisha. I'm good. Good. Um, I was not able to make any of your shows yesterday because I was deathly seasick. <laughs> I was in bed all afternoon and I was heartbroken. Oh, so I would. I don't want you to sing like a whole song, but I was wondering if you could just <laughs> <laughs> give me. Uh, she just, wants an extra a little, show. A Do you hear this voice of mine right now? <laughs> Ain't nothing coming up. Oh, man. Where do you live in New York? I live in the Bronx. Bingo. Okay. Craig, my manager's back there. Mm -hmm. We Black Street. We're gonna be in Brooklyn at the King's Theater on okay. October seventh. I want right. you to come. Okay. I want October you to come. October seventh. Make sure you give my October seventh. Make 7th. sure you give my manager's number, I and you, I mean, give him your number, and I make sure you're okay. Okay. Thank you. Look thank at you. that. Look at that. <laughs> what a blessing, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody said today, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, but you were at the show. You were at the show, though. You were at the show. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so you were right. getting a little taste of it. Come on Probably. up, brother. Huh? Most definitely. She can't come by herself, brother. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, brother? Um, Tony Evans from St. Louis, Missouri. Tony, what's up, man? Um, Okay, me and my wife, we are big fans of yours. We didn't get a chance to make those shows either. Oh, wow. Not without a lack of trying. We just couldn't get in there. Okay, so my question would be, uh, are you coming to St. Louis, Missouri, anytime soon? And if you're not, what is the closest place? Because I asked my wife, I say, we love him. Why we haven't never seen him? Because we always out of town every time he comes to St. Louis. <laughs> right? So I said, okay, well, we're going to come to where he at. So if you're not well, in St. Louis or somewhere close, close, what's the closest place? The funny Who thing is I just left the ambassador in St. Louis on the, 22nd of, on the 22nd of July. But we actually are working on um, a, little, a little tour uh, that we're trying to do around December. So St. Louis, one of my biggest markets. I gotta come back. Yes, sir. Because I didn't, I didn't come with the band. I was there. I had tracks. So we wanted to come. Every time I come to the ambassador, I always have my band. Okay. So um, we we working on that. So around Decemberish, you should be you should be hearing something. Sound hey, like a winner. Where were you yeah, in July? Said, where November. were you and your wife in July? Out of town. Out of town. He's <laughs> out of town. Yeah. <laughs> it was me and Life Jennings. Life Jennings. We were both there together. That's for sure. <laughs> It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. So definitely, December, man. sometime in December. Sometime in December. All right. Thanks a lot, I'm I man. I'm, I'm sorry you couldn't get in, bro. I'm sorry about that. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> next I'm next time, maybe they'll have me in the theater, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you. Thank you. Good afternoon. How you doing? What's your name? I'm doing fine. My name is Tina Daniel. I Tina, how you go a little closer to the mic. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Were you there? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no. Los Angeles. Uh, remember that festival that just got canceled yeah, yeah. with L.A. Soul Fest. We were yeah. supposed to play that that day that they canceled that Saturday. I mean that Sunday. Mm -hmm. It was a Sunday. We were. I just came from church preaching and I landed. Then my manager told me, "Uh, don't get don't 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 get on the plane." He thought I was leaving home. I said, "Don't get on." The, I mean, our manager told, him, "Don't get on the plane, man." I said, "Dude, I'm here." 
I'm here already. Well, call Tori and tell her to get you to the hotel. No, no, just give me another plane back, uh, back home. I'm going to turn around and go to the other gate. I got to go back home. If we ain't doing nothing, oh, I'm going wow. home to my wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I also, my, um, my uh, commencement uh, with my um, doctorate, I just, uh, we had the commencement service at um, West Angeles. Oh, okay. We, so we was just there. I was just there about a month ago now. Cool. Yeah, I'm coming back, though. Cool. We'd love to see you. Good. My, Good. my question is, I'm just looking for another funny story. When you, when you, um, how old were you when you first knew that you could sing or somebody told you you could sing? Is there a story around that? Seven. Seven. I was, I was seven. I was in the choir. Um, and we had what we called the junior church. Our church was so huge that we had a church for the kids, like junior church. Mm -hmm. And back then, you know, it was the older people that was over us. So, you know, it was kind of like our grandmothers. Um, so Mrs. Watson, I'll never forget, she had a song uh, that she wanted me to sing. I don't even remember the song. And, you know, we, we would go into the big church every fourth Sunday, I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> every, fourth, every fourth Sunday. And... Um, the song that I sung, I, don't, I still don't remember what it was, but, you know, my little self at seven, come walking up to the mic. My mother tells the story very well. <laughs> come walking up to the mic, and, I, you know, I start singing. And all I knew is I just saw everybody jumping around and falling on the floor and <laughs> doing all that. And I'm like, what in the world is going on with these people? Lady, I'm like, man, what, what's going on? I got back home, and my father looked at me. He said, Boy, I did not know you could sing like that. <laughs> I make sure you sing every Sunday. Like, hold on, Daddy. No, man. Not about to be doing no singing every Sunday. I just know one little song. Like, no, 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 man. If you don't, I'm going to skin your hide because that's what you need to be doing. So I was like, all right, Daddy, whatever. Needless to say, I stopped going to his church and going to my mama church. So he wouldn't put me up every Sunday. So I was seven years old. Was so who time. took who took the credit? Your mom or your dad that you got your voice from? They b actually both sang. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess I got it both ways. I don't know. It was it was inevitable, man. You were supposed <laughs> to <laughs> Thank do you, what baby. you're doing right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank Good you. afternoon, David. Hey, I'm yeah. Madeline Haver from Chicago. Come on here. All right now. Shot time. All right. Um, bringing you greetings from Cool Black. He was your DJ. Oh Lord. That's my boy. Yes, I'm sorry. That's he's my a, dude. He's that's our stepping dude. DJ, and so uh, he's I, not here, is he? No. Okay. He couldn't come that's this who time. We needed. Just wanted to tell you I enjoy your music. Thank you so for much. every morning for almost three months. I played that favorite girl thing, oh, whatever. You know, I you. was. I told him I was Mary Jane before Mary Jane became <laughs> Mary Jane, and that song kind of took me through it. So thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate you. Love you. That's great. How you doing? Huh? Oh hi. <laughs> so I'm Joy from New Jersey. Hi, Joy and from New Jersey. First, I want to say. Um, Prayers to you and your family and your wife on a speedy recovery. Thank you so much. Um, so yesterday you had mentioned that a lot of your songs that you wrote came from a personal place, the place that you were at. Mm -hmm. So one, how come you didn't learn from when you was writing the songs? Mm. Why didn't you learn mm. from them? Mm. One. <laughs> didn't I just tell her I was hard-headed? <laughs> No, I just told good. you, they Joy. Were, they were good songs, though. <laughs> Thank good songs. you. Thank I got you. the albums. They were good songs. Thank you. Favorite Thank girl, you. good songs. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. And um, the, the things that you write now, so the, the Spend My Life With You and, and those songs, mm -hmm. you're clearly in a better place yes. now. Yep. So do you feel like you have a responsibility to kind of, um, sing these songs now because you said transparency is where you're coming from. So do you mm. feel like you have a responsibility to sing these songs to let people know if I can do it, you can do it too? Coming from where you came from, from your, like watching your unsung mm -hmm. um, episode, coming through all of that to where you are now. So do you feel like you have a responsibility to say, look what I did, look where I was, look where I went, and how good God can be if you just let him? I definitely feel like I have a responsibility to uh, to deliver a message. 
whether that message is that or something else, um, I definitely feel that there is a responsibility to uh, still be a messenger. Um, and and a, a lot of times I would, I would always say, even when, you know, I go to the religious churches, um, uh, God allows me sometimes to go and, and teach or preach there. The first thing I tell them is I'm not a preacher, I'm a reacher. Um, so don't don't sit here and look for me to give you the uh, exegete the scriptures, although I can do it. Right. I'm not going to use the big words. I'm not going to, you know, try to talk you into a, a tizzy. I'm not trying to do that. I'm going to give it to you the way God gives it to me. And a lot of times that's raw and uncut. So if y'all can't deal with that, then I want you to exit this building right now because I'm not trying to be somebody that God hasn't called me to be. And my thing is I am a messenger and I know that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I have a responsibility to deliver the message, whatever it is, whatever it is. If it's man, if you cheat, this is what's going to happen. Even though a lot of us, we cheat and we know what's going to happen. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, you're going to get caught. If not, then sooner or later mm -hmm. it's going to happen. The law of average, you know what I mean? How many times can you keep going, doing something before something else happens to, you know, bring you to a, the Bible said, expected end. What, what goes <laughs> around comes back around? Yeah. What goes around <laughs> comes back around. She was listening last I was night. Listening. <laughs> I was listening. The words, the words, watch the words. <laughs> yeah, watch the words. Though. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's talk about. What you shared, you were kind to share, being so you're in a transparency mm -hmm. part of your life, mm -hmm. um, during your shows on this ship about your dreams. Mm -hmm. um, one around your wife. <sighs> my, my wife now. Yeah. Um, well, did now, it, <laughs> tell me it, one more Specifically? Uh -huh. Specifically, what, what do you? Um, when your wife got ill and she was... There you go. I was hoping you'd get there. Um, I asked God to give me a second chance at family um, uh, because I, I told my first one up. Just, I mean, you know, you know her. You, you've been around us. Um, you know, we were together for 14 years and uh, whoever didn't see the unsung is just, you know, food... Uh, information for you. Um, I was not ready to be married at that time. And uh, she forced me into marrying her because she said that she was going to abort my son. Um, and uh, the, the older boy that we have is, was hers by another relationship, but he was nine months old when we got together. So I fathered him, I took him, fathered him, gave him my last name, but he was not my biological son. So when I found out she was pregnant again, she had already had two abortions um, before this, against my will, of course. Um, but this next one, you know, we found out it was a boy. And me being stupid, did not realize that she could not abort him anyway. It was past the time. She couldn't, she couldn't do it. She still forced me in the marriage. I wasn't thinking because I was thinking drinking all the time. You know, uh, and I stayed in a in a state of intoxication most of the time uh, because of you know what was going on in the group, the unsettling in the group, and um, so the the day we got married, I cheated. The night we got married, I cheated on her, and um, you know I was not, I didn't care at that point because I told her I wasn't ready. So um, you know, cheated that whole time. Found out she cheated on me. And I had a fit, like I was about to take my own life. I mean, we we can do it to y'all, but we can't take it when y'all do it to us, you know. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, of course, man hating. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else in here. I'm talking about me. So I couldn't handle it. That's when I, you know, went into the whole uh, cocaine situation and drugs and all of that. And um, God delivered me. He saved me from it. And I told God, in spite, I mean, with everything else, with everything else, God, that you re that you've given back to me, please give me another woman. But give me the woman that you made for me. 
I don't want to be just sleeping around with this one and that one. And that. I want the one that you made for me. Um, and he did that. Um, she was very, she is a very strong woman. She very, she's Capricorn, so she's, you know, headstrong, um, very independent, you know, um, got her stuff together, very business-minded, you know, goal-orientated. She's a saver. I'm a spender, you know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so normally, God, when you ask God to send you what you need, again, be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for because a lot of times the thing that you don't like in your spouse is the thing that you have a problem with in yourself. You, 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 see, you attract with who you are. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're definitely, you know, because I found out when, I, when, I, when that revelation came to me, I found out I'm looking at all the arguments her and I had. Well, not arguments, the intense times of fellowship. Uh, <laughs> 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 the intense all times of fellowship. All the all the intense times of fellowship that we had, I was looking at the arguments like, dude, you are arguing about something that you need. You need discipline in spending. You you need this you need to learn how to spend more time with your family. That's one thing that she would always argue about as well. Spend time with me. Take me somewhere. Do this. Do that. Come on, let's go here. Get do do this, do that. And I'm push it back. I got to work. I got to do this such and such. And I got to do this. I got to do that. Okay. You, but what about me? So a lot of times it, it was pushed back. Um, three months ago, she had had a procedure and uh, she ended up uh, going out on the table uh, and she ended up being in a coma for three and a half weeks. Um, I actually le just left the rehab facility to come here and that's why I hadn't been doing no no anything. Just I couldn't get out of doing this cruise, of course, because if I could, I would have. Trust me, because nothing's more important than my wife. Nothing. I love y'all. I love you know, but my wife is my number one priority. And um, <clears throat> I remember when you called me, you left me a message I couldn't answer in the facility. So I said, man, I gotta call Lenny when I get out. I gotta call Lenny when I get out of here. Call him Uncle Lenny. I gotta call Uncle Lenny when I get out. Um, but I was in the facility. She was in a coma for three and a half weeks, and God was just dealing with me the whole time she was in there. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I said, I remember He brought me back to times when we had those intense times of fellowship, and I said, Man, I just wish you would die. Just wish you would. I, I just, I, you dead to me. God said, now this is what you asked for right here. This is what you asked for. You sitting up here snotting and crying because she ain't here right now. She's on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a table, on a breathing machine, tube down her throat, eating, eat, being fed from a tube up her nose. She looking like somebody that I've never even known because you wanted her dead. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. The Lord said, now I can do exactly what you want me to do. But I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to give you another chance. I'm not going to do y'all kids like that. I'm going to give you another chance. She's going to come out of this. But like Paul had a thorn in his side, you're going to have a thorn in your side. Because there's going to be something about her that you're going to have to, you're going to have to keep up. Don't know what that is yet. But it's, it's, an, it's a reminder of what this situation was. I was like, well, Lord, I don't think I'm going to ever forget this one. It's no way I can forget this one. And it's a, it's a dual thing, but um, she has to learn some things out of this because we were made for each other. When you're made for each other, you cannot mess around or mess up what God has joined together. You have to learn how to treat your spouse. And this is what God is doing, man. He's, he's, taught, me, he's taught me in this, these three short months. They seem long. Yeah. She's got to learn how to walk again. 
um, she can talk like nothing before the doctor said, yeah, she, she ain't forgot that. <laughs> she, she definitely ain't forgot how to do that. Um, but she has to learn how to walk again. Uh, she's prone to seizures now. Um, and when she was, she was healthy, well, I'm just going to be transparent, and I don't want none of y'all to put this on social media, please. Um, but she, ladies, and this is for you, when God give you your body, leave it alone. I'm going to just say that. When he gives you, because you telling him that what you did ain't good enough. Mm. Bro, leave your body alone. Men, us two, leave your bodies alone. I told her not to do it. I see it going bad. She did it anyway. And here we have this. So we're now learning. I'm learning how to treat her. She's learning how to listen to me as a man of God and her covering. I didn't tell her not to do it because I ain't want her to do it. I told her not to do it because I saw God let, let me see that if she does it, it's going to go bad. And she didn't listen. And now we're here. But it's for both of us. When God gives you your mate, and that's why I say, man, it, it, people, people, Uncle Lenny, let me tell you this, man. Pe I tell my church, y'all got to pray about everything. Yep. Because especially now in these yes, days, man, yes, we yes. can jack ourselves off. And the, and the enemy is just waiting, lurking for us to do that. God connects with you uh, as he connects with all of us different ways at different times. When is your most intimate conversations with God? <laughs> you, when or what? Well, what is very? God, my, 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 when I spend time with God, a lot of times, man, I'm not asking him for nothing. I'm, you know, because a lot of times we always seek his hand, but we never want to seek his face. We always want something from him. How about getting up in the morning and asking him how he doing? You know what I mean? God, how how you doing today? You know what I'm saying? It it's a it's a conversation. When you talking to God, prayer, pr when we talk this is a little thing, I don't want to get too too deep. I call praying to God, chatting with God. C H A T. I use a lot of acronyms. C H A T. Communicate honestly about things. When you talking to God, when you chatting to God, you're communicating with him. Communicate honestly about things. Things, T-H-I-N-G, normally some trouble you're going through, some heartache you done experienced, some, um, some, some uh, need, some instruction that he's given you, or some growth, you know what I'm saying? Or some sin, it's one of them things. T-H-I-N-G, we talking to him about something, about, but we never are really honest with him. You know what I'm saying? And when I'm honest with God, that's when I see that he shows up the most. When I'm honest, because he knows anyway. Right. Who you going to, wh what you going to get over on him? <laughs> nothing. nothing. <laughs> you ain't going to get nothing over on him. So in my, in my into most intimate times, I'm usually chatting with God. I'm being honest. God, I don't feel you today. And when I say I don't feel you, meaning I don't feel, I don't feel what you just did to my wife. That ain't cool. You know, that's how I talk to God. Now, you might can't talk to him like that, because that ain't your, that's not your relationship with him. But you have to have a relationship with them. How you going to have a relationship with somebody you never talked to? So with me, that's how I talk, man. Dude, I don't, man, I, don't, I, don't, I ain't cool with what you just did. Well, you shouldn't. And then he back at me. You shouldn't open your mouth like that. <laughs> that's my relationship with him. You know what I mean? And my intimate times with God, I'm honest. That's what I'm being honest. When I wake up in the morning, Lord, thank you for waking me up. How you doing? What, what you need from me today. Not what I need from him. What do you need from me today? And he'll normally take me to my Bible. My manager will tell you my Bible sprawled across my bed right now. Because if I don't feed my mind with something else, something else will happen. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? So my intimate times I, I spend being honest and just having conversation. Everybody enjoy the conversation. We're about to cap this up, but before we let everyone go, I, I think, you know, uh, it's only appropriate with the times that we're living in right now. We have a room full of people. Um, we have to think about those who are not as fortunate as we are right here, right now. So what I would love for you to do is, uh, 
to give us a prayer or give us a thought or give us some direction, give us some inspiration of what we need to be focused on, what we need just to do as a people. Because obviously, uh, tragedy, devastation often brings people together beyond measure. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for us to be uh, prayer for it, pray for it. So please do. Come on, let, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Um, God, we, we thank you for gathering, God, the gathering of your people. God, we know that this world is in a state of devastation. We know we got an idiot as a president, God. God, but we know that you are in control. Nothing happens in this world without you touching it or allowing it to happen. Father God, now I ask that you would fix our focus, God. Fix our focus and let us focus on you and not the devastation. Father God, whatever is going on in this world, God, we ask that you show us what it is so we can pinpoint the areas to pray in. Because, God, we know that prayer changes things. Not weapons, not, not mouths, not talking, but prayer changes things. And, God, I know that we're going through so much in our families and in our lives, God. But God, again, I would I would ask that you would impress upon your people to bring their problems to you. Let's not bring them to our girlfriends and our our boyfriends or our dudes, or our homies. You are our boy. You are our homie. You are our mate, God. And we want everything to be pleasing to you. We ask God that now that you give your people peace as we on this boat and we're traveling and we're having a good time, God. We ask that whatever storm that's around, God, we ask that you would hold it back so that it would not touch us, God, in the name of Jesus. And we ask that when we get back home, we find our places full of the way we left them, full of your peace, your love, and your power. God, we will forever give your name the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Reverend Dr. Dave Hollister. When is the uh, when is the album coming out? The, the new album. We we working on it now. Oh, Greg, when is the new album dropping? We we, we focusing on sometime in in the first quarter. Sometime in the first quarter. God bless you, brother. Love you, man. Love you, man. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Yes.